All right, so we're going to jump into, well, if you're new here, we do a snake draft sometimes, just whenever we have time. Today we're doing, in honor of the draft, uh, number one picks. So uh, I'm going to let Max choose his spot. So the snake draft, just like in fantasy, um, you can be one, two, or three. And, you know, you snake around. Okay, I'm going to take, give me the number one overall picks. I think there's a pretty clear one, one here. So I'm going to take the number one. <laughs> Man, you took my spot. I, <laughs> I, know, I know who you're going to take, and I'm going to want him. Mike, you want uh, two or three? I'll take three. Take All right, three. I'm, I'm going to be stuck with two. All right, All right Max, give me, give me number one. Uh, I'm going to go with the guy who is currently, and I say currently because I think Mahomes might pass him soon, but I think currently the second best quarterback in NFL history, uh, that is Peyton Manning. The, uh, the Colts quarterback went number one in, I think, 98 was the year. Um, yep. Yep. Yeah, he's uh, – you, know, you look back at a lot of these number one picks, man, a lot of them just don't work out. And I don't even think it's a, it's a problem with um, the player himself. I mean, it's obvious that, you know, the NFL is in a league where the worst team gets the first overall pick. That means you're going to a bad situation. Payton is one of the few quarterbacks that actually made that situation work, uh, honestly. Yeah. So won a Super Bowl with the Colts, uh, then won another with the uh, – with the Broncos, like I said, I think he's probably right now the second greatest quarterback in NFL history as of right now behind Tom Brady. Um, four, I think, MVPs, maybe even more than that. Um, he is literally one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, honestly. And I think this is a pretty clear 1-1 one -one and um, also plays the most important position on the field as well. So I think uh, Peyton Manning is pretty clearly the uh, the number one, number one overall pick of all time. Peyton Manning, five-time five time MVP. Five-time, yeah. Damn. Yeah, monster. Um, I'm going to go there. There is a guy and I don't, I don't tip picks. That's not my thing. Um, but there is a guy that I have a little higher than this guy as an overall player, but I think this one is the sexier pick to take. I'm going to take the former Baltimore Colt, mm -hmm. John Elway. Okay. Um, you know, the Ursay, uh, Robert Ursay, what, what can we say about that? But John Elway, I would say pretty, he worked out. I mean, he worked out as the number one pick and, I don't think you could have expected much more. I know he had trouble getting over the hump in the beginning, but Peyton had trouble getting over the hump yeah. sort of in the beginning. And they both got there, and I think always proved himself. And he's a he's a pretty good executive too, I would say. Yeah, he is. That's a good pick, honestly. Well, so you guys went with the sexy pick. I'm going with the – I'm going way, way back. I'm going – okay, so 14 number one overall picks are in the Hall of Fame. And – it goes as far back as the guy that I'm going to – well, actually, no. It goes back to 19 – the earliest Hall of Famer was drafted in 42. I'm going Chuck Bednarik. Mm. Yeah, he was a eight-time pro bowler. <laughs> he was a center, and he is considered one of the hardest-hitting linebackers of all time. Now, I know – I have to do a little more research on him now, but I've heard the name many times over the years, and it's going to be so easy to have recency bias. And of course, you know, there's nothing – I can't argue with taking Manning and Elway one, too, but – Chuck Bednarik was a center and a linebacker. Let me help oh. number one overall picks did that. Had a nice, a really nice 14-year uh, career with the Eagles. 10-time first-team All-Pro, 8-time Pro Bowler, uh, NFL's 50s All-Decade team. How can you not? How can I not? Yeah. I'm going Chuck Bednarik, number three. Oh, and then no, I get the number four pick. Yeah, you get the number four as well. That's snake drafts work. Um well, out of principle, I can't put uh, – O.J. Simpson, I hope he tumbles way down this list. He was a great player, but, you know, I mean – I was he – was, he was on my he was list. On list. He was on my list but, of possible. And there's some great – some other great names on here, but it's it's hard for me to ignore a four-time Super Bowl winning quarterback. So I'm going mm -hmm. Bradshaw. So I'm going back to the traditional quarterback route with my number four pick because Terry won four rings, and he's a hell of a broadcaster and a hell of an actor. Absolutely. As a Steelers fan, yeah. I appreciate that pick a lot. Yeah. No, you are. So, okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. I'm sure. Pick. I'm sure you're happy right now with you know another Steeler quarterback. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go. Oh, this one just fell right to me. I'm gonna go Buffalo Bill defensive end, Damn. Bruce Smith, just monster. If you've ever played Tech Mobile, I've played Tech Mobile. He is a monster in Tech Mobile. Just unstoppable. Um. A lot of my older football knowledge comes from Tech Mobile because my dad, me and him, would play it a lot, and we still play it sometimes, but he would always teach me. And the Colts were so bad at that time that you would play with other teams, too. 
Dude, Bruce Smith, I uh, look at it right now, he's 1980s All-Decade team and 1990s All-Decade team. That's, that's insane. That's absolutely insane, yeah. So he's one of the greatest defensive players of all time. He still has, a, uh, still has the record for most career sacks in NFL history, too. So, um, yeah, Bruce Smith was literally going to be my next pick uh, if he got to me. But uh, it's a good pick. Man, there's a couple – I don't want to tip picks here. There's one here that I'm looking at that I just don't want to pick because I think he's one of the most overrated quarterbacks to ever play in the NFL. Uh, so I'm not going to pick him there. Um, I, think I, I, think I, I think I know who you're talking about too. Holy yeah, shit, dude! He's <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not a fan of him. Uh, I think he's very much a product of what he was around. Um, is he an announcer? He's going to come on he, here. He is, and, he is and an announcer. Angelo he is an announcer. Okay. Yes, yes, very prominent announcer. Yes. Yeah. Uh, great wanna... announcer too. Really good announcer. I, nothing against him as an announcer. Uh, I just think as a player, he was he, get, again great player. Just I think what he's being talked about as is wildly overrated. Um, I'm going to go with, you know, I, I know Michael said it. He wants him to tumble uh, off field <sighs> aside. I am going to take OJ yeah. Simpson. No. OJ Simpson was, is probably, you know, again, off field aside, what a top 10 running back to ever play. Um, I, I don't agree now with uh, taking running backs as highly, um, but I will say back then they were valuable. And I think uh, again, off field aside, he, he was one of the greatest running backs to ever play the game. So I, I'll go with OJ Simpson here. I don't love the pick because of everything that happened with him. Uh, but I will go with him here as my uh, my other guy. He had 2,000 yards in a 14 game season. Yeah, that's, that's absurd. insane. Yeah, great and, actor and, too. Really good and actor. He was great. Yeah. yeah, the Naked Gun movies were fantastic. He was Nordberg. I mean, of course, this was before anybody knew about all the other stuff. But it, <laughs> he was, yeah, he was really funny in those yeah. movies. All right, you got another one, Max. Oh, correct. Uh, man. I, man, it's tough. These number one overall picks, is, a lot of them just didn't hit, man. So you're looking at a lot of, uh, a lot of like not great guys. I, um, yeah. Orlando Pace, man. Orlando Pace, uh, you know, unfortunately PFF wasn't really around when he was playing uh, until actually the, the latter half of his career before he really became a, a player, a great player. But um, one of the greatest offensive tackles probably of all time. I know one of the greatest tackle prospects of all time. Um, Hall of Famer. Uh, I, I think, you know, he's a guy that I would love to have as my kind of – my left tackle, uh, and I, I think he has really been, you know, one of the biggest parts of that whole greatest show on turf uh, team that they had in, in L.A. in, in 1999. So uh, I think Orlando Pace, again, not a sexy pick maybe, but uh, I, I think he's one of the greatest ever at his position. So I think it's a, a pretty solid pick here. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> that, that was perfect. Um, I'm going to go – I'm not going to take that one guy that you were talking about. I'm going to go Earl Campbell. Um, yeah. rookie year, 1400 yards. I see 1900 and 1980, which they were still at 14 games at that point in 1980. No, Is that right? Just Did they go to 16? 78, I think. Still, uh, 1900 yards, pretty damn good. Um, and what was this? I had another one written down. I don't know, but still Earl Campbell monster. I still wish the Houston Oilers were a team. I would much rather have them than the they Tennessee Titans. Out the jerseys, they had the throwbacks this year. So that's that's, nice that's blasphemous to me that the Tennessee Titans are wearing Houston Oilers jerseys. Yeah. I get, oh, the franchise owns it. I don't care. That's the city. Those yeah. are the city's uniforms. The city of Houston deserves them. Give them back. And then the University of Houston tried to wear them too, and they got uh, like knocked down by the NFL. Yeah. No, I, I think the thing with Earl Campbell that really is amazing about his career, too, is that, man, he put up all those stats and all those, you know, amazing counting stats. He's probably the greatest power back of all time. So he, a lot like Derrick Henry in a lot of ways, where it's just like you get this guy the ball like four times a game, he is just killing guys. And you would think that mm -hmm. that would wear him down and, and really didn't. And so I, I think Derrick Henry is kind of a good modern day comp for him because it's just like it's unbelievable. Like every other running back that gets the amount of workload Derrick Henry has breaks down pretty quickly. And yet Derrick Henry's still going right now. Uh, and now a free agent, we'll see where he goes. But yeah, it's just it, Earl Campbell's career is so amazing to me. It's because he was such an amazing player, even though I mean he was taking hard, hard hits basically thirty times a game for the uh, for the Oilers. Mm -hmm. All right, Mike. Yeah, I mean, you guys were really just bad mouthing Angelo Bertelli, weren't you? Nineteen forty four, first overall pick from Notre Dame. <laughs> now, um, uh, well, if I love the Orlando Pace pick, so I'm going to bookend that dream offensive line with Ron Yeri, mm -hmm. who was named to uh, seven consecutive Pro Bowls to start his career. Now he played 14 years. He's a Hall of Famer, both college football and pro football Hall of Famer. I guess that's to be expected, right? You know, I mean, yeah. that would be a good study to look at. Is every, you know, 
Pro Football Hall of Famer? Are they also in the College Football Hall of Fame? That's well, another. Kurt Warner, definitely not. Definitely not Kurt Warner. Yeah. So that's a great point. <laughs> yes. Um, Probably like Marshall Falk. I don't know. But, um, no, Ron Yeri had an incredible career. He only missed two games in uh, 14 seasons for the Vikings due to injury. Uh, Six-time first-team All-Pro, seven-time Pro Bowler, 70s All-Decade team. Um, again, I don't. I know pro football focus wasn't around in, 19, in the 1970s. Would have been nice to see what Yeri's measurables were, but mm -hmm. he is wearing a gold jacket, and I think he uh, is very deserving of the what what am i number nine in this this is the ninth. yeah this is not yeah, yep. yeah perfectly fitting so now we've got our bookend offensive line oh, offensive lineman um okay number 10 well i you know what i'm gonna take the guy whose highway i drive on here sometimes oh. i'm going i'm going leroy selman Damn. uh so yeah i heard a i heard it growing there uh six-time pro bowler pro football Hall of Fame, truly the first great tampa bay buck Right. Yeah. Now he was he was drafted in '76, and as we remember, or we may remember, the '76 Bucks are famous for being right. It was the '76 Bucks that were winless. They were the first winless team, and for a long time, the only winless team in NFL history. That was a 14 game season. Let me see. Here. Until the yeah. Lions. Oh, and the Browns. Yeah. Until yep. the Lions and the Browns. Uh, that was the famous quote. John McKay said. They asked him about his team's execution. He said, "I'm in favor of it." <laughs> One of the great all-time lines <laughs> talking about his Bucks team. Uh, but Leroy Selman was like the linchpin when they, they turned it around. They made it to the NFC Championship game in 1979. Um, and just a great defensive player, great defensive end, had a nice long career, played, all, well, I guess back then, nine years, considered a long career, 70s and 80s. But he was six-time yeah. Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro. Um, he had looking at his see how many career sacks he had, but no, I feel very good. I feel very good about him. Uh, even though he only had 23 career sacks, but he had 28. And how do you have 28 and a half career forced fumbles? I'm not sure, but that's how good he is. He, he knew how to get half of a forced fumble. They might have, uh, <laughs> when did they start counting sacks? So that might have been while he was playing. Oh, that's a good, counting. yeah, that's a good point. That's um, a really good point. Yeah, and the not whole nine season. I know he had like a bad back that made him retire early. So I mean, he could have had even better. He, he's a Hall of Famer. He could have had even better career if he had a bad back too. Um, yeah, he's a legend. So I literally was my next pick if he, if he came around to me. So uh, that's a good pick. Um, I'm I'm gonna show my age here. I'm really gonna show my age because these guys are the guys I really grew up with. Um, they're both quarterbacks. First one, Cam Newton. Cam Newton was one of the – when Cam was was Cam, he was one of the greatest athletes I've ever seen, I think. Like that that 2014 or 2015 season, I don't care about the Super Bowl. Cam Newton was one of the best athletes I've ever seen step on the field. He's just a monster, like physically imposing, just – I mean, he couldn't last, but Cam, I think Cam Newton deserves it more than anybody. Okay. Yeah. That's a good pick. That was another one I was looking at right there. Uh, so am I up right here? I have two picks? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to take two quarterbacks as well. Um, I'm going to go with – I'll go with Eli Manning first. So I got the two Manning players on my team. Uh, Eli, good – always been a good quarterback. Never, obviously, reached a legendary status as Peyton, except for in two games he did, uh, which were in the Super Bowl against Tom Brady, the Patriots. First one – I think it was maybe the first Super Bowl I ever remember watching fully – uh, was the 07 one against, uh, obviously, the undefeated Pats. Greatest upset maybe in sports history. Uh, and one of the most legendary moments ever when he breaks out of the sack, launches it to David Tyree, helmet catch. Next Super Bowl, he plays Tom Brady again. Um, as the I think one of the greatest throws in NFL history that doesn't get talked about enough is that sideline throw to Mario Manningham. Mm -hmm. uh, between I think it was double coverage. and Manningham made an unbelievable catch to getting his feet down. Uh, I, I personally, that's probably a top three throw ever for me, uh, considering how important that stage was when he threw it. Um, so, again, really good quarterback for his whole career. And two games against the greatest quarterback of all time, he was legendary. So uh, I think Eli Manning, again, a guy who was drafted like John Elway, pulled John Elway, uh, where he was drafted by one team to, and refused to play for that team. So he went to a different team. Uh, Eli went to the Chargers originally, and then obviously got traded on draft day to uh, the Giants. And one of the funniest pictures ever is Eli 
giving a awkward smile, holding up the Chargers jersey when he was when he was drafted because <laughs> yeah. everyone knew he didn't want to go there. Um, so yeah, I think it's pretty funny that Eli and John Elway both did that, and, and honestly, it worked out for them. So um, I would go with him. And the other quarterback I'll go with is Matthew Stafford, who, uh, oh, again, great career, always been an unbelievable quarterback in Detroit. Uh, then he gets traded away to the Rams, wins a Super Bowl with them. Again, like Eli Manning, had a really legendary performance in the Super Bowl. Uh, cool for him to get a ring. Always been one of the you know best quarterbacks ever, just for stats-wise. Um, Going to be up there in passing yards uh, when his career is over. Uh, I, I think he's a Hall of Famer. Um with Eli Manning probably. So I, I would say those are the two guys I'd probably go with is Eli Manning and, uh, and Matthew Stafford. Yeah. Great picks. I'm going to go with the, I'm going to be the Homer. I have to do it. Andrew Luck, my favorite quarterback of all time. He turned that two and two and 14 Colts team immediately into a playoff team. And then went to the playoffs three straight years, they were climbing a ladder, climbing a ladder. And then his last rated kidney and, some Colts fans hate him for some reason. I don't. He was taking care of his body. I, I think your body is more important than any football game ever. Um, and we didn't surround him with the best. Uh, so Andrew Luck, he's. I mean, he's just my guy. I mean, he he did show he was. He was what he lived up to for about four seasons, four or five, or what he was built up to, four or five. Seasons, even if I lose the draft. Yeah, he he was great, man. It's it's unfortunate that we never really got to see what his full career could have been because I think he would have been up there with the all time greats. But uh, even in, in the limited you know years that we got with him, he was still phenomenal. So uh, one of the few that I think really just lived up to to the hype he had. Like he had like he Peyton Manning, John Elway had this crazy hype coming out of college, and they all lived up to it. Uh, I think Trevor Lawrence had the same hype, and we'll see if he can live up to it. I think yeah. he can. Um, and I think Caleb Williams is probably one just one step down below them. So we'll see what he could do with that hype too. But do you uh, yeah. think Burrow had that hype? I think he did. I would – no, not with – I would not put him on the same level as Luck, Lawrence, and Elway and Peyton. Um, I think they had a level – like Lawrence we knew for three years. We knew Lawrence – and I, I was seeing articles – I love recruiting too as, as a college guy. So I was seeing articles about Lawrence when he was in eighth grade being like, this kid's special. Uh, then all of high school, he was the number one player in the country. Went to Clemson, won a national title in his first year. Um, and was one of the best quarterbacks in, in college football history, honestly, over his three years. So I think Burrow was different because Burrow had the one year, which was great, but Burrow only had one year, really, where it's like, oh, this guy blew up at it. It's kind of like a Cam Newton year. I, I, mean, I wouldn't put up Cam Newton as one of the greatest quarterback prospects ever either. So um, that's why I would probably say Burrow's one step down below, um, and I'd probably put Caleb on the same level as Burrow as in that regard as a prospect. But, yeah, I think Luck, Lawrence, Elway, Peyton Manning, like they, they were a different level. Yeah, it's weird too. Andrew Luck always struck me as a guy that like he he was a like a he wasn't a football player, but he was in a football player's body. And he had he made some just incredible throws. Like yeah. on the run, I remember that New England playoff game in the rain. He made some absurd yeah. throws, guys surrounding him. I mean, he the pure talent. Amazing. So I'm I'm with you, Max. He was he was in love with concrete. That, that's like one of his favorite things to talk about. He would read books about concrete, concrete? on the on the team bus Amazing. to go to go to games. He would and he would be driving. They'd be driving by and he'd go look like that. You know, he'd point out the concrete. He'd point out the designs. And guys were like, "What the fuck is this guy talking about?" <laughs> what about concrete? There's Why don't you focus a, on the game? <laughs> there's a great article. Um, someone did it a couple years ago uh, from ESPN. I, I wish I could credit the writer because was, was it great. Zach Kiefer? I think it was, yeah. It, w it was like just kind of like where, where has Andrew Luck been? It's just been like him, yeah. like in a, in a wooden cabin, right? Over the last few years, he's just like <laughs> he's just off the face of the earth, really, uh, living his life with his family, which I think is awesome. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm very happy for him that he, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of these guys don't retire before their body breaks down. He was lucky enough to know, hey, I, I got to get out of here. Um, so yeah. I'm really happy for him. He's obviously got a great life now, um, but it, there always will be kind of like a, a whole what if, you know, because the whole Andrew Luck was starting to reach, you know, superstar level status. He actually was at that level already. So him walking away from the game, I'll never forget where I was when I found out that news because it, it was it was a, definitely like a where were you when moment. So it was a, one of the biggest stories I can remember in the NFL, honestly. He was such a big part of my just childhood. You know, when you're a kid, sports are everything to you and you look up to these guys like I still talk about Andrew Luck and I well a little bit. I'll well up a little bit, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. What are you doing welling up over a man, like another guy, you know, a fo an athlete? Like, I love right. football, but I'm like, don't cry over this guy. But I'm like, I can't help it. Like, he gave me so many happy and sad memories, and I'm doing it again. I'm just yeah. going to stop talking. <laughs> uh, Final pick. We got we to go. I got to give 
the old guys again some love here. I, I'm going back to the 50s and Paul Horning, who, again, just like Chuck Bednarik, actually was not only a great halfback, he was also a kicker. So that was back when it was like you couldn't talk smack about kickers when they're also your halfback, right? And Paul Hornig, um, he was on the uh, – so his last year with the Packers, basically his last year in the NFL, was the first ever Super Bowl. But he did win four championships. Um, this was really before a lot of, like, big-time accolades, but he was uh, just a linchpin of those Lombardi teams and just passed away a few years ago in 2020. Uh, lived a good life, 84, but um, – he was a Heisman winner. Appreciate that as a college guy, Notre Dame guy. Um, and I, I just think he, you know, it, it's it's hard because we we kind of think of these players in different eras, and we just automatically assume like, oh, today that yeah, they probably wouldn't be. But we really never got to appreciate how great they were, even if it was in a different era. And uh, and Paul Hornig was was pretty damn good. So I want to go with him. There's, a, there's an really award is. in college football now called the Paul Horning Award, and it's given out to the most versatile player in college football every year. So that just shows you, you know, how amazing he was as a college player. And obviously, yeah, he's, he had a great NFL career too. So, yeah, I, I think it's a very worthy pick. Yeah. Uh, before we move on to the real NFL draft, I'm going to give a couple <laughs> of uh, honorable Ooh. mentions. Um, Mike Vick, num- I mean, just hell Pure of an excitement. athlete. Pure excitement. Yeah. Bo Jackson, again, yep. one of those guys if injuries well, yeah, didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then what was the other one I had? I uh, lost my spot here. I think, oh, I think we Jeff can give, George. Yeah, Jeff <laughs> another Colts. <laughs> I think we can give – now I think we can give credit to Troy Aikman. I think this is the point. I'm glad none of us took him. I think Troy Aikman now, – now we can give him the credit because I think he does deserve to get a shout-out here. He was a six-time Pro Bowler, did win MVP, uh, three-time Super Bowl champ. Again, those Cowboy teams were freaking loaded. Uh, he's a lot like Brock – he was a lot like the Brock Purdy of those Cowboy teams, if you will. Um, but he is a three-time champ, did win MVP, so I'll give him love there. But I, 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 I do, you know, uh, I hold people who, who kind of put him up there as one of the greatest ever. Like I don't, I don't think he's even close to it. But uh, he was, a, he was a solid enough quarterback, and he did, you know, tuck three rings. So I, I'll, I'll give him credit for that, for uh, for doing that for sure. I'm going to throw in a few of the Hall of Famers that did not get picked. Uh, 1942 running back Bill Dudley, 1945 uh, running back Charlie Trippy. Trippy? Did I say that right? It was trippy. Um, honorable mentions for sure. Uh, and I got to throw some love to Keyshawn Johnson because say what you will about him as kind of a diva, but had a pretty good NFL career. And uh, yeah. it, despite, you know, despite writing a book that was called Throw Me the Damn Ball. I love that. <laughs> I love that. And uh, yeah, Drew, I mean, Drew Bledsoe obviously had a really good career. Mm-hmm. Uh, Irving Fryer. Yeah, Irving Fryer. I mean, w- I would uh, the the fun exercise would be the too all-time tall Jones, bust yeah. or two tall Jones Bubba Smith, um, who was also an actor. But I think the fun draft would be who are the all-time worst. Oh, right? dude, there's probably, there's probably a better, probably a way more list of names than uh, than yeah. Here. But uh, no, that's good, man. I, I like the uh, I like those shout out. I love how you got all the like the the forties, man. You're bringing out the forties on us. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I, we were talking about this. We gotta love the history, right? There's so much of this game is about just the history and how we got here. And so yeah. these players that right. so easily forgotten because they were from many moons ago. Yeah. No, dude, all right. I think well, great let's jump in to the. Uh, yeah, um, and speaking of uniforms, oh, yeah, we're gonna okay. do our uniform draft. Right. I'm going to forfeit the first pick to you you can i'm going to give you the one one here let me just well, I, 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 so i'm a very visual guy i, I want to be looking at all of them once so i'm not i'm not uh, missing anything um the nfl has uh, adam rank had the ugliest uniforms in history <laughs> he, he actually put the uh These, so this is our favorite this is not the best this is just what you Love the most. Oh, you know what I don't like? I never liked the Steelers Bumblebee ones. Oh, um, I love the Steelers. But I the wasn't Seahawks with those those like really bright green ones that they wore on like primetime games. Oh, it was just <laughs> nauseating. Oh yeah, the the well the Nike the lime green or whatever. What was it? The Nike the color rush. Every yeah, team like had those ones. ugly yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, like the mustard. Who had the mustard uniform? Uh, Jacksonville. The Jacksonville, yeah. I think who I think it was like maybe Cleveland and Jacksonville played a, a Thursday night game because they would only Tennessee wear them on Thursday and night. Jacksonville, Tennessee and Jacksonville. Played. That was a uh, Henry's hundred yard or ninety nine yard. Yeah, rush. yeah, that, that sounds about right. Um, 
So how does this work? So you you do one, I do one, you do one. It's just alternating. Basically. We're going with best. You're, no, your favorite. Favorite of all time. Yeah. I I really like the Chargers powder blue, but the but the the set like earlier, not the not they went a little sleeker in like the late two thousands, and now it's more now it has that alternate look that they use it. It's like their main one. Um, but I'm thinking like early. 2000s, the ones that really looked like the old AFL Chargers. The the, the I Lance guess... Allworth Chargers Powder Blues are my favorite. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with my all-time favorite uniform. Like this, I don't think, I think almost of this is all of sports. The Houston Oilers. Just, there's something about that well, Houston kind of that Oilers. Blue. Yeah, yeah. The the blue and red. I don't know why the Titans are the Tennessee Titans. Just go to the Tennessee Oilers. I think they did it for one year when they made the move. I think they were the Tennessee Oilers for one year, and then they rebranded the whole thing, which the Clippers just rebranded, which I like the Clippers oh, rebranded. Right. Yeah. Um, but I'm going Houston Oilers. Those things are gorgeous. Just and I, I mean the powder blue. Whatever, I think they have like a home and away, the powder blue ones. Yeah. The, you can't go wrong with powder blue. I mean, the Phillies powder blue, the Royals, I think they have a powder blue as well. Um, the Cardinals, the St. Louis yeah, Cardinals, those yeah. like 70s, 80s, they're, they're awesome. So do you get to pick again then? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I'm going to go, I, I hate like, cause I hate just going all throwbacks, like throwback, yeah. throwback, throwback. It feels a little easy, but the Pat, the Patriot, the, I do like the that. red, yeah. those red Patriot, the, the one where, um, the Pats beat the, the Titans like 59 to nothing yeah. or something. Oh yeah. Yeah. Whatever they wore then. Those that are, the, that was the 2009. That was the AFL celebration. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going, and this is traditional. I've always loved the Carolina Panthers road uniform. Now, there's some teal in it, but it's there's just the, it's just white and black, just enough teal to keep you kind of like okay, this is. They just always look really sleek, and I associate it with that 2003 team that I loved with Galome and Steve Smith. And so I'm going Carolina Panthers original OG road uniforms. Let's see here. I'm just trying to the. Let me see. The black with the teal trim yeah. on them? Yeah, not those gross, pure teal alternates that they started wearing in, like, the mid-2000s. Not even the home jersey, which is black with the trim. I like just the white with the, sh the, the teal trim on the shoulders. Oh, the white jersey the with white the teal jersey. trim. Yes. Let me see here. I'm just yes. trying to f make sure I get Just it right enough here. color, just enough hint of subtlety. All right, do I get to go, do I get another one? Yeah. Because I'm staying late night, well, no, early 2000s. I like when the St. Louis Rams upgraded from those gold ones that, that they wear now as the throwbacks to the ones that they wore with the greatest show on turf in 2000. They started wearing them in 2000 after they won their first Super Bowl. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just because I associated with that era, that the greatest show on turf era, but like... The, the gold, the golden blue? Yes. The go the, Well... Look up, like, 2001 Rams. And if you just look at the images, the, the uniforms they wore that year as their home jerseys. Oh. And I'm in the road jerseys, too. So the, it was like the, it's, it, it's but, not the yellow gold. It's no, more no, no. of a it's, mustard gold. It's like dark. They had the, well, the road uniforms. Well, the home uniforms were the dark blue, gold trim, gold numbers. Yeah. And then they would wear gold pants. Um, and then the road uniforms were the white, dark blue numbers, the just gold trim on the shoulders mm -hmm. and like dark blue sleeves yeah. with the, then they, I think they upgraded the Ram um, horn to gold. It was more of a yellow color when like they were wearing them when they won it in 99. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I just, I, I, again, I think it was just cool. Cause I, I, I don't love football in domes, but I kind of like watching them in the dome when yeah. they were, you know, that high flying team. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to, my next one. So number, my third pick uh, I'm going to go with the Dolphins throwback, the green jerseys. Green, oh, not the orange. With the orange, they wore the green, the green with the orange numbers on the shoulder. So they wear them, they wear them as throwbacks now. Um, oh, the, the teal. You're talking about 
Well, oh, the oh, the, the more, yeah. Was that the one they were wearing when they did the Miami Miracle? Yes, I think they were wearing that those. One. Yeah, yeah. But out with that, I'm trying to remember if that day was all the, it was all teal. I don't know. The, the, the Dolphins have too much teal. If anything, I would like the Dolphins low uniforms, but even that has too much, too much aquamarine going on in it. Yeah, I'm looking at these ugly ass, not the orange shirt, I, the green it's whatever, I mean, it's like what Dante Culpepper wore. I was at the game in 2004 when the Dolphins famously upset the Patriots on Monday Night Football. Of course, I left before they came back and won. <laughs> but they were wearing those orange throwbacks that year. And those were kind of cool. They had they would bust those out like once a year on, in prime time. Orange Dolphins alternates. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going, is that teal, teal or teal. green? I don't know. Well, it's, I think the one well, you're these, about is more green. Look at here. You can kind of tell here. Yeah, those yeah, exactly. and it has so it has like it's a white lettering and then an orange back or a yeah orange background on the numbers. Right, it's gorgeous to me. Orange, and then I, I want to throw in like a, a simple, simple one. Um, I'm gonna go with like those. They're they're so ugly, but they're gorgeous. Also. Um, the 49ers, like, the gold mid-2000s. So... Yeah. It was kind of, like, almost red. Yeah, it's it was just... I, I want to say it was, like, right before Alex Smith. Like, the mid-2000s, this, like, red with that, that again, like, that mustardy gold. But they, but they changed the letter. The, the numbering almost looked more like the Arizona Cardinals old jerseys. I like I'm looking at one here. Oh, like the early 2000s. The ones I like. Let me see. Uh, Omens. Yeah, let me. That might be what I'm thinking of. Yeah, I'm thinking of that one. Yeah. It almost looks like, honestly, it almost looks like a Bucks jersey. Yeah, a little to bit. Me. A little bit like what they, maybe not what they wear now. Maybe it is what they wear now. I'm trying to think of a Bucks jersey now. I hate the Bucks uniforms. I hate the current 49ers uniforms. Yeah, the oh, current 49er uniforms like are ugly, well. too. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give you one. Or no, is it, are you still on your... Uh, no, you're up. Okay. I like the traditional, because now they don't wear... Now they wear the orange as a home jersey. I like the Bronco blue. Dark, the blue home jerseys that they started wearing in 97, because they changed from the orange crush after 96. They lost in the postseason. They changed to the new dark blue jerseys, and they won two Super Bowls. But then they changed those, I think, the year Peyton Manning got there. I think they started wearing the orange as their primary and the blue yeah. alternate jersey. So if you look at, like, early 2000s Broncos, you know, last year, of course, the last year at Mile High was 2000. I just I just like the blue with the orange trim. I don't know why. I just like it. It just fits with the, with the stadium, and they kind of play in, like, you know, in, yeah. in, in the mountain. I don't know. It just looks right. It looks right. Early, it was the early 2000s. Early 2000s, and I think I'm looking at a picture of Brian Greasy here. It looks like the, I can't tell if this is an optical illusion, but the orange trim of the jersey actually comes down and continues into the pants. Which is oh, pretty, it does. It's really cool. I never noticed that. That does. That, that is, absolutely does. 2001 Broncos, they were rocking the orange pants. Oh, no, white pants, but the orange trim. Interesting. But I, I And I like the Broncos road jerseys at that time, too. I still like them. I think I, there's something about subtlety that's. I think the Broncos have to bring back the, the unicorn. Whatever, whatever the the hel the white helmet with the like the the big D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That it's that has to crush. be brought back. I just think that's so much better. I'm something about that, like the blue. Maybe I, oh no, I'm looking at it right now. It's the blue helmet with the orange stripe down the middle, and then the white kind of outline on the orange stripe. Right. But then it's blue all on the sides. And then it's the orange D. Yeah. There's some, to me, there's something about that. That's just, because I always think of like, with the new ones, for some reason, Brock Osweiler always comes to mind mm. when I see them. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any. Plus seeing Elway in that looks weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does not look right. You know, I, the Saints wore these um, retro gold unis in 2002, and I feel like they may have brought them back since, but they had a couple games in 2002 when they wore, yes, they were, they were, um, if you look at 2002 New Orleans Saints, they had a game where it almost looked like a color rush jersey, because I, I like their regular jerseys, 
gold pants and yeah. black. But they had, it was like a light gold. And it was just all through. It was just light gold, mm-hmm. black numbers. I, I know exactly what you're talking At, but about. But then they also, had, that year, they also wore another type of throwback that year. And I'm looking at it on their on their website, if you go in New Orleans, States, where it was like black with like the thicker gold numbers mm-hmm. um, and yeah. The yellowish pants it was kind of i don't know white it's a, a gold and white um stripes on the side or on the sleeves right yeah and on the pants and i'll tell you that 2002 saint sidebar one of the weirdest teams in nfl history they beat every great team that year and lost to all the horrible teams fascinating team i actually think i did a draft america article on that a few years back about i don't know if you'll ever see an like an anomaly like that of one team that could be every great team they swept the bucks who won the super bowl and they lost yeah. to like the Two and fourteen Bengals, three and thirteen Lions. So it fits that they wore all these different uniforms because they were so Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. All right, you got one more. I got one more. Yeah. Uh, oof. Um, you know what? I'm gonna do it because they brought it back this year. The Seahawks. Uh, you, did I steal that from you? Man, I was I was really thinking. Yeah, about it. I mean the Kingdom Seahawks jerseys with like the green, or the blue green. Um, God bless them for bringing that back yeah. this year. I mean, fantastic. I liked when they, I didn't mind when they, Chris Berman used to say it was like they look like CFL uniforms when they changed it in 2002, I think it was. Yeah. And now it's, a, it's, it's, they, they've changed that look again. But I love, I love those John Kitna early, you know, late 90s Kingdom Seahawks jerseys. Yeah. I'm, since there's no more, no more, I'm just going to mention a few, just like my own. Okay. Mentions. Um, the Eagles throwbacks are what was the, it? the 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 like Kelly, the Kelly Green. Those are good, but they had one in '07 when they wore a blue and gold. Oh and yeah, disgusting. I love those too. You liked it? Oh. Those are those are so ugly. It's like you know, it comes back so around. Bad, it's, it's like good. awesome kind of thing. Um, yeah. I mean, the Raiders are very classic, but the, yeah. the I col- like the road uniforms. Raiders. The, more are than those like, the silver ones? Well, the, yeah, but no, I'm talking about like Super Bowl Raiders more recently. Oh, okay, not not. Latin this year's a different number. You know. The uh, the bumblebee ones for the Steelers. Terrible. Uh, the Packers when they looked like they were wearing oh, no pants. Yeah, that was bad. Those like tan. Those are hilarious to me. Yeah. I love those. Uh, the Vikings throwbacks are gorgeous. That like it's it's yeah. not it's not very different, but it's just enough where it's like yeah, this is really sick. Uh, Go look at the '96 Ravens. Look at the numbers on their jersey. It was so cartoonish. <laughs> I was. I have to mention the Ravens at some point. And Those are purple, hilarious. Are purple's classic. But if you look at the like, Ray Lewis, the the jerseys look in. It just looks so weird. It looks like someone like it was like animation. There was another really weird Ravens jersey. Um, well, they wore black pants. It was just where they had purple with black pants. They had one. They had one. It was like with the Maryland flag on. Or something. I can't remember what it was. There was a, it was either a jersey. It was a weird placement for the flag or something. I can't. I'm looking at gold pants with with the purple jersey, which is mm. hilarious. Just ugly, and I, I I adore ugly uniforms too. Like they're just so funny to me. Yeah. Um, I would rather see a ridiculously ugly uniform than something that's just so boring. Like the Colts are boring. They oh, are so boring. They it's, don't do anything. Some people say it's classic. It's fucking boring. The, they always do the throwback against the Steelers with the Colt on the back, like the two two Colts uh, logos on the back and nothing on the side, and then they have, like, the three stripes. Nothing unique. There's nothing unique no. about it. Um, the Steelers, I think they've had a couple cool throwback ones. Um, Cincinnati, eh. They're kind of eh. The the helmet is cool. I like the helmet with the well, the, the stripes, the tiger one, stripes. Yeah, they had an orange alternate in mid two thousands, which was kind of cool. Um, the lions are mad. They're pretty boring. Like the Chiefs haven't changed really. No, at the all. Browns have, but everything looks weird. But it's the, be the classic two thousand three when they wore the orange pants with the white jerseys. I like that. But the one, and I'm wrestling with these two. It's either it's either the uh, '90s Bills. With the red, the red helmet and the blue bill, or the Giants, the 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 nineties Giants, not the current uh, ones with the and NG, not the red um, Giants. It was 
like oh five. No, no, no. I'm just talking about nineties um, Giants. Let me see here. Yeah, the one they brought him back. I think this year it has the Giants in script. It's whatever Lawrence Taylor wore. Right. I'm right. wrestling with those two, but I'm going because I've done a lot of blue. Well, I've actually gone back and forth on this. I'm going to go with the blue because I've done two red and one blue. I'm going to go with the Giants with the Giants script on it. Just very classic. Right, right, right. Very just, it, it just screams 1990s, 1980s, really, to me. Whatever, whatever uh, Giants. Yeah, they're, I thought they were, they're doing new ones again this year, I think. Are they? I want, they were announcing uniforms and we're going to wrap up in a minute here yeah coming in april they're doing new uniforms they they just did new ones not mm. long ago i feel like whatever they did was like two years ago either way they're man they're okay all right well um that's it we're gonna wrap it up uh i think there's a few art there's a few cool new articles that have come out on chaotically intolerant uh so go check that chaotically intolerant.com some baseball stuff we're going to be ramping up the baseball. I think we're going to be doing some vlogs from maybe some different spring training games. We're going to try and coordinate that. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's all. And we will see you on Monday.